I'm John Stobart, and here we are in beautiful Bath, famous for its Georgian architecture and Roman baths. Let's go and discover an interesting place to paint. Well, I've found a fabulous place to paint. It happens to be subject number one in Bath, right on the river. And here's my friend Trevor Chamberlain, and we're going to see what we can do with this. Trevor, it's great to see you. Hello, uh, John. And uh, let's have a go at this. Well, that's right. Yes. It's going to be terrific. It's quite a challenge, I think. I think it is, but uh, as, as usual. Yes, I think the, the subject has got a lot of um, dark and light yeah. and warm and cool. Contrast, yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the composition is, is quite yeah. pleasing, yeah. although I think I'm, I'm going to um, not include those modern buildings at the back. Exactly. That's exactly what I decided not to do. They just don't fit the, the beautiful architecture of the bridge and they That's spoil right. the silhouette of it. Yeah. Well, let's well, get here, to it. Well, here we go then. Right. I'd like to get the church spire in, but um, I'm going to have to lower it down in order to get the top in. Yeah. Well, we'll make a start. As usual, set the parameters and decide what we're going to have in the composition. Yep, it's going to work fine. Well, having roughed it in, I think I'm going to get in on straight on with the laying in of the broad expanses of colour and tone. At this stage, my laying in of colour won't be terribly accurate. It'll probably be more pronounced so that when I come to work on it, the, the stronger colour will just shine through and give it a certain vibrance, I hope. I am roughing in, what they call roughing in or blocking in, with some rather terpsy pigment, keeping it quite loose and, and not worrying about the drawing too much. I just want to get the whole canvas covered so that I kill that white which is showing. I can then work on that in greater detail. I'm putting the dark of this uh, colonnade in because I need to establish that it's very low in tone that and it establishes the lead into the picture and the roof of the building behind it which will hardly be seen is right there. I like these lines leading into the composition that's what it's all about. And these two lines here, one there and one there, that leads into the composition. The perspective is, is doing a lot for me here because it's leading the eye into the eye of the subject, which is the, the bridge. The sun is moving very rapidly now uh, in a direction that we don't want. Um, it could mean, it could force us into uh, coming back at the same time tomorrow to complete, although it might not. That's always an option that uh, the artist has to have up his sleeve. I love this dome. There are two domes here. The one dome here, right there. There's a dome there, and there's another little dome right there. And I like those two domes because they, again, lead the eye towards the subject. So does that line. 
I think the focal point here is this nice little window on the bridge. Yes, it's going to work fine. This, this reminds me of uh, the famous bridge in Florence over the river Arno. Right. It too I remember, has well, right by the, uh, that, that big gallery. Uh, what's the name of that again? The uh, Uffizi. Uffizi, that's right. Yes. It too has some shops yes. and, in interesting little bits. Beginning to look good. Now the light has gone quite a lot off that facade, that main yeah. facade, hasn't it? We're going to lose the shadow very shortly. Yeah. So it's quite important. Quite an important feature. That fisherman is just in the right spot, Trevor. Yes, nice, makes a nice little shape against mm. the against the, the, the foam of the weir. Yeah. I wanted that dome on the left end and the church. Uh, and I also wanted the, the brick wall on the lower right. So I'll probably move that in to the left just a tiny bit uh, when I come back to it. Yeah. For my part, I, my picture, I have roughed in and I'm beginning now to work in further detail. It's, it's a bit of a mess at the moment, yeah. but um, I hope I will do some work here and there which will Trevor, I think lift it. Trevor, it looks absolutely lift it and, uh, terrific. You've found colour in, in yours. Uh, you've found a lot of colour that uh, well, I, I think livens it up. Uh, well, I started off by yeah. overstating, yeah. making an overstatement on colour, yeah. uh, so that when I put a more correct yeah. interpretation on the top, that, that colour will show through. Yeah, I think that's a terrific suggestion for the student, though, to start with more colour than is there yes. and to tone it back. And then you have these little bits Yes. sticking out. I see that your canvas is not heavily primed like mine is. No. Uh, I, like to, I like to have the feeling almost that I'm working on an old painting because I love working <laughs> on an old painting, don't you? Isn't it well, I, I like to have a virgin yeah. canvas actually. You do like to yes, yes. Because, you, because you, I enjoy that texture. This canvas tooth is showing yes. a lot on yours. And will you build up at all with the uh, impasto? Oh yeah, I will a bit more, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, but yeah. I started off very thinly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just to rough in. Well, that's the, that's the secret of your success. I think it's terrific. I do, really, I think. But of course, the, the way the, nice. the sun is catching it at the, the canvas at the moment yeah. means that you're seeing the texture of the canvas rather more than perhaps you would otherwise on my, on yeah. my painting. Tricky getting those warm spots under the bridge. Sorry? Those warm spots under the bridge. There's a, if you look into the bridge, under the bridge, yes, it's sort of under warm. the arches, the reflected right. light from the water. Yes, that's tricky getting that. Very, very tricky. I find those buildings slightly different in colour. The one on the right is a little warmer than the one on the left. The one, the buildings on the left, I'm talking about. Which uh, up on the top there, yeah. or, the, or the colonnade? Yeah. No, the, t the buildings on the top. Oh yes, yes. But. Uh, But I like the little lighter colour around that window. Oh yes, and, yes, yes. And little splodges on that one, you know. Yes, it's those yes. little things that will give it personality. Yes, yes. All colour, as it goes away from you, gets less intense. If you can be mindful of that when doing things, then you can create this aerial perspective. And if you get these changes in tonal and colour and hue, it, it's, uh, it, it'll live. Well, we all have our own um, uh, ways of mixing colours and we all start off with probably different base colours anyway. And uh, so we're going to end up with slightly varying results. Yeah. Um, but that's the way we individually see things, really. Another thing that you have to be conscious of is that in 
a shadow on a surface, depending on how much reflected light there is bouncing around, it'll make the thing look brighter if the, as a, the complementary colors are increased, such as in the shadow, to make the shadow cooler and the light area warmer. And if the warm surface in the light is redder, then the shadow should be a little greener, which is the complement of red. Or if it's a yellowish, then it should be purplish in the shadow. Just marginally. I'm going to take advantage of this uh, change of sky. We've got a bit of cloud being introduced. Yes, the clouds have suddenly come in, haven't they? And yeah, makes an interesting backdrop, really. You look for um, the form of the clouds in the sky yeah. when yeah. you're yeah. painting the sky. Um, the big shapes, the, la the light side and the dark side, and the type of sky it is. This is obviously very changeable, so you have to seize on some arrangement and keep to it. I'm using a palette knife here uh, and quite a lot of finger to soften the edge. Um, yeah. I use brush sometimes, but uh, I very often use the palette knife for initial laying in of colour. I find the the arches, very fascinating. The dark and the mysterious sort of suggestion of things in the darkness. And then you get the way through to the, to the lighter background. Fascinated by, by dark areas in a painting, like tunnels and archways and doorways, yeah. contrasting with the light, really. I'm just working on the sky and giving it a bit of form. I want the, it to help the composition align through the shadow here, up the steeple and back back around here and back down into the picture. Just a little dark on the underside of these clouds. It's difficult always to know exactly what colours you're using, but I think I'm using French ultramarine, a little burnt sienna, and probably a touch of yellow ochre. Apart from that, I don't really think I'm using anything else. There may be, there may be a touch of viridian or alizarin crimson, but when you're working, you dip so naturally into your paint that you don't know exactly which one you're using. I'm now just adjusting the length of the shadows. I had made them a little bit too steep, predicting that the sun is going to go right round on that surface. Just lessening those shadows just a tiny bit. There we are. I think I'll attempt to put the, to design a sky that is uh, based on the cloud color I see. That will, I think, improve the uh, the composition. I, I don't like that very strong line and I need something going this way to resolve that. I need it to come around and so I'm going to see if I can uh, 
but a cloud in that shape. I think I need something right there and right there. This again is all trial and error. Uh, this light here needs a compensation up in the corner here. That's better, that's jumping to life now. I think that's jumped to life right there. That's exactly what this painting needed was something to compensate this up here. Just doing it very roughly at the moment. I want this paint to get a little tacky before I put the church back in, but otherwise that's looking terrific now. I'm glad I did that. I don't like the fact, and it is before me like this, but I don't like the fact that that chimney is right in line with that light area and right in line with all that. that, that cre it's creating an optical illusion that this is part of that. So to change this, I'm going to overlap that chimney onto here and not send it back that way. If I sent it back that way, then something else wrong would happen there. I'll take that off and we'll move that over. That's with my artist license, I can do that. There we are. And as soon as that goes over, it will help the composition. Simplify it all and not try and do every little window and every little pane of glass. The Canada geese are saying hello to us. The, the, yes, bit, the bit uh, you were speaking of... Yeah, is this uh, vertical here, uh, which is a crucial part because it's the end of the bridge, yes. which I'm adjusting slightly anyway, because right. I like the colour mm. today, which is the... Uh, and I, I'm going to put that archway again. In, but that chimney was lined up right with the edge of this. Oh, uh, yes. And it was creating the illusion that somehow there was something wrong here. Yeah. Now I've taken that away and uh, it works yes. again. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. I too have uh, managed to um, avoid keep, that. Keep, yeah. keep that away yeah. Yeah. from that corner. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to get some of these uh, windows suggested, but merely suggested rather than precise shapes and details. On the shadow side, I've cut them down to a, a suggestion of a few. I don't want to state every single one. When you look at a, a scene, you look at the whole scene and don't see specific detail unless you look at a specific item in the, in the scene. So it's not terribly important to get every last thing in Trevor and I have been doing this for quite a while. Quite a few years and uh, therefore obviously we've got a, a finesse that looks a little bit impossible to emulate maybe. But it's not true at all, is it Trevor? No. It's, it's open it's... to anybody that wants to really give it a shot and uh, if we can well... just encourage them to get out. Well, it's down to the artist to work at it uh, and not give up and work at it regularly. I'm still working on the building at the left-hand side with the dome on it. I'm trying to get the light, which uh, 
is with us at the moment. I think the business of mixing colours is something that frightens people off a little bit. Mixing colours, yes. But it's, it's something that you almost have to play with without... At first, you've got to just play around with it. I remember when I was a student, and everything seemed like mud to me. It all got down to a sort of grey. I couldn't keep the, the colours clean. And here am I, I've got a rag in my hand, and constantly, and I clean my brush after every stroke almost. And that, in that case, the, the colours are a lot fresher. That's one way of doing it. And you just keep picking up little tips and learning little tips on your own. Nobody can actually teach you to paint. You've got to teach yourself by observation and execution. But if you do make a mistake or you're not happy with a passage, one has only got to take a rag and wipe it off and start again. Yeah. Well, I keep looking up. And one minute when I look up, there's a cloud shadow over the bridge. And then the next minute I look up, it's back in, sh it's back in, in brilliant light. And when you see that change, it's a, bit, it's a bit awesome because you don't know how to quite... It's fr a bit frightening. So cloud shadows are basically there to bedevil you and and yet you've got to pick up what you can and just observe them the shadows and when it's in shade and when it's back in light again I'm just cleaning up some of the architectural detail it's a lot of concentration and uh, in concentrating hard this is where the results come That's nice. That's a nice shadow effect that's on the building right now, isn't it, Trevor? Isn't it? There's a slight difference in tonal value from the stone that has got the lichen on it, on the same face from the stone that has not got lichen on it. And it seems to have the lichen on it around the windows. And all those little things, if put down, will add to the interest in the painting and somehow make the viewer want to take a closer look. I'm making a sharp um, edge where it's silhouetted against the sky and it's better to paint the sky around an object uh, than it is to paint the object up to the sky. I think what's happening with me is that I'm just at the point where I need something in the foreground, and there it is. I think I'm going to put that swan in. Yes. Because that will give a little touch, and I can put it right where I need to. Good. Very light patch right down there. That'll help that corner because it gets too monotonous all the way coming to the end. Well, Trevor, I think that's it. I think we, there's a time to start and a time to finish. <laughs> yes. Well, I think, and I think we've. I think we've. Um, I want to come over there and see what you are up. Oh, look at that! You, I love the. Uh, I like that. Uh, the warmth in the building, you've got that just right, and that's that technique of putting that warm tone on right at the beginning. That's right, yeah. roughing in in a strong that's a, colour. You've got a terrific result there, Trevor. I'm, I'm really well, very impressed, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm 
quite pleased with it. Just gorgeous. But uh, I need to do just a few more things. But, uh, I'm so glad that the... Uh, let's have a look at yours. Our audience has been able to see that. That's just terrific. Well... Ah! Tremendous, tremendous. You've got, well, you've got the, the architecture of Bath yeah. just right. Well, it's, um, and the lovely colour, we, warm, mellow stone. We always think that the, we yeah. can do a lot better, but that's been absolutely terrific, Trevor. Thanks All a lot. Best. Well, I've enjoyed working with you. And why don't we go and have a cup I of think, tea? I think that's the best suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our visit to Bath. Please join us again on our next Worldscape. Let John Stobart show you the basics of painting in simplifying outdoor painting. This instructional video, never before seen on television, is available for $29.45, including shipping and handling. To order with a credit card, call 1-800-839-1991 or send your check to CPTV Stobart, P.O. Box 82, Hopkinton, Massachusetts, 01748.